Thank you. And good afternoon to everyone. Welcome back to our third installment of July's Housing Matters Lunch and Learn Speaker Series. Earlier in July, we touched on fair housing issues uh, on the county level with Cook County Commissioners Scott Britton and Brandon Johnson and Kevin Morrison. We also discussed housing counseling services as well as transitional housing and support programs for especially single parents with Mary Jones. This week, we will continue our series with a very special guest. Let me make sure he's on here. Oh, there he is. I see. Hey, Larry. And I see Dana out there, too. So oh, we, we got a full complement of folks from the Board of Review. Um, let me just tell you a little bit about Larry. Um, he's the longest serving commissioner at the Cook County Board of Review. He's been ser he served since 2004. He's committed to making Cook County Board of Review transparent, efficient, and accessible to ensure that all taxpayers do not pay more than their spare share of property taxes. We like that. <laughs> we only want to pay what we owe. <laughs> Commissioner Rogers' commitment and belief in the work of the Board of Review is why over 10 years ago, he sought this office to represent the constituents of the 3rd District. He knew that the work of this office in reviewing property assessment valuation appeals was important, and its impact on families, homeowners, and businesses was great. Therefore, he made it a priority to educate property owners of their right to appeal their property assessments by going into the communities and bringing the services to, of the Board of Review through community outreach efforts. Many of you probably know who he is and know uh, and have seen him in the community um, putting on these workshops. Accessibility to this office is essential, and his office is worth diligently to leverage technology to make the office and overall process more accessible, efficient, and transparent. The, the employees of the Board of Review are here to serve the public and will gladly assist all of you throughout the process, answer any of your questions, and ensure that you understand what evidence you might need to best support your appeal and warrant a reduction in your property assessed value. Commissioner Rogers is an attorney at the law firm of Powers, Rogers, and Smith. He has a very long history of advocating for victims' rights, representing individuals and consumers who have suffered injuries or lost loved ones due to negligence by individuals, corporations, and even government. Now, he advocates for the nearly 2 million residents of Cook County and the board and, and that the Cook County Board of Review represents. Commissioner Rogers, thank you so yes. much for taking time out of your busy schedule because I know how busy you are. And um, I'm glad that you're giving us a few moments of your time to, to share with us. This is the Maywood Proviso Rotary Club and my employees are on this line as well. So they want to hear from you. Um, I've given some basic information about you, but uh, could you tell us a little bit more about yourself and your work at the Board of Review? Sure. First, let me thank you for the opportunity to present. Um, it's rare that we get a chance in such a small uh, group to really exchange ideas, thoughts, and, ex and expose you to what we do at the Board, but I welcome these opportunities and I appreciate the, opportunity, uh, the chance to speak to the Rotary Club and your employees. Uh, but before I do that, I do want to tell you what a great and fantastic clerk we have in Karen Yarbrough. She does a fantastic job. Uh, she has really uh, brought about change in that office, much needed change that allows our elections and the other services provided that office to move smoothly. Uh, she works well with people, which is important in government and not always the case. Uh, but she's just been a joy and pleasure to work with. Uh, I make Karen, uh, when I first decided to run for office years ago, and uh, we became we became fast uh, friends and supporters of one another, and uh, it's it's been a pleasure to work with her in government and outside of government to make sure we get qualified and capable elected officials. Uh, I do see my friend Henderson on the on the phone as well. I want to acknowledge him as well. He's 
also committed to service and has done a great job over the years. Um, and then let me introduce to you someone I'm very happy about and proud of for the work she does in our office. And that's Dana Pointer. She is my director of outreach. Uh, she has been with me for a long, for, for many, many years and just has, has always performed above and beyond what's been asked of her. She does a fantastic job. She works mornings, afternoons, and late into the evenings as necessary to make sure that we provide the services uh, that we can to the taxpayers of Cook County. So Dana, wave, say hello for me. Hello, thank you, Commissioner, and thank you, Clerk Yarbrough. Um, I, again, have been working for Commissioner Rogers for about 15 years now and uh, started as a summer intern and um, worked my way up, educating myself on um, property tax appeals and the whole process. And currently, I'm taking courses, as we speak earlier this morning, um, for more certification so that while I am out educating the taxpayers, I can make sure that I'm answering all the questions. There are new, uh, uh, unique situations that have been coming up. So I just want to make sure I'm able to do that. So in August, we're going to be kicking off our outreach session. Um, and we already have a few things um, in the working. So you guys can check our website or you can also um, join our texting service. The number is 474747 and you text the word easy join. And once you do that, you'll hear about all of our upcoming events that Commissioner Rogers will be hosting to educate everyone on the process. So again, I want to thank you all for those few minutes, and um, I'm glad to be on the call today. It, she's fantastic. Um, you'll, you'll keep your eyes out on her. I always worry about her running against me one day. She does such a fantastic job. But uh, we need good, qualified, and capable people like Dana who are committed to service to serve and we need to support them. So I've been happy to support her and she's uh, been, been, been great to work with. Uh, so let me talk a little bit about who I am. My name is Larry Rogers Jr. I'm Commissioner of the Board of Review. I was first elected in 2004 with the support and help of, of Karen Yarbrough as well. And uh, I was elected to this office. Uh, what is the Board of Review? The Board of Review is, is by statute called a quasi-judicial office. Uh, and what we do is hear property assessment appeals where individuals believe the assessor has overassessed their property. And rather than go back to the source of that overassessment, you have the opportunity to come to an independently elected office at the Board of Review and submit evidence uh, that you believe supports uh, your position that you've been overassessed. Uh, even if you don't have evidence and you simply believe you've been overassessed, the Board of Review. Uh, through its analytical staff will research your property and the assessments uh, the assessor has provided to other properties like yours in your area and determine whether or not you've been overassessed. Uh, so we, th this is a system that's been in place for decades and uh, for, for far too long it was primarily utilized by all the downtown businesses, the merchandise marts of the world, the Willis Towers of the world, uh, and every year they would file appeals uh, either with the assessor and or the Board of Review, seeking to reduce their assessed values and thereby reduce their taxes. Uh, those were sound business approaches to reducing their liabilities while they raised revenues and rents. So I'm, I have no criticism of the fact that commercial properties seek reductions of their assessed values, but we've always felt that that's something that everyday homeowners should likewise have the opportunity to do. So uh, since I've been in office, we've launched uh, a very aggressive and extensive outreach program focused on um, individual property owners in on the south and west sides of Cook County uh, in my district and beyond to make sure that they understand what the Board of Review is, understand the process, and they have the opportunity to appeal both at our outreach programs and through other means. Uh, there was a time, uh, a point in time where you had to fight when I first arrived where you had to file an appeal in person at the Board of Review in a triplicate form by coming into the office and we'd stamp a copy and keep a copy and you have a copy. And since that time, we've, we've uh, instituted a great deal of technology that makes it as easy as possible to file an appeal. Um, uh, you can file online through our, our website at cookcountyboardofreview.com. 
Dana mentioned our texting service, uh, which allows you to receive notifications of when the filing periods occur. Um, and you can all, always come into the office. Uh, or you can come to one of our outreach events, and we, we accept the appeals right there at the outreach events so that, um, uh, again, the process is as easy as possible. It's always been my position that the more people that appeal in a given area, the better context we have for what are appropriate assessed values and where the assessed values are inappropriate. So it does not hurt you to file an appeal. Uh, absent some illegality or fraud, we will never increase your assessed value. We will either lower the assessed value assessed by the assessor or do what's called a no change and leave it the same. So there's no harm in filing appeals. We encourage people to file appeals uh, every year and we suggest you do it twice a year, once with the assessor and once with the Board of Review. So you can have two um, opportunities to have your assessed value evaluated to determine whether it's appropriate or not. So our agency, um, there are three elected commissioners at the Board of Review. Um, uh, they are broken down into districts one, two, and three. I'm commissioner of the third district. I'm elected primarily by the uh, south and west sides of Cook County. Um, and uh, there are about a million seven people in my 1.7 million people in my district. Um, uh, I, as I indicated, I've been elected to, since 2004. And one of the, the proudest things I, I think we accomplished during my term was to <clears throat> institute this outreach program, uh, as well as modernizing the property assessment review process. How have we done that? Uh, well, with the outreach program, uh, again, um, the process was one utilized primarily by industrial properties and commercial properties. Uh, since I've been in office, we've expanded that to make sure we make everyday homeowners have the same opportunities and access uh, through the online appeals process and our outreach programs. Uh, but we've also created uh, what's called a digital appeals process, which allows us to transfer files internally, electronically, and puts everything we do in terms of analyzing a file from the calculations to the comparable properties that are used to evaluate your property online so you can see it. So uh, those efforts were undertaken to thwart any suggestion that there were backward, backroom deals or, or that attorneys got better opportunities than individuals. We want everyone to see exactly what we do. Uh, we have nothing to hide. We want it to be a transparent process so people uh, will know how to utilize the system to make sure they're paying no more than their fair share. To receive a reduction at the Board of Review, you need the, the vote of two commissioners. Uh, out of the three that are sitting in office. Um, and so that usually occurs with the analysts looking at your respective files, uh, pulling comparable properties, uh, and then determining whether you're entitled to a reduction. What entitles you to a reduction? Uh, the law dictates that, at the, that uh, the assessor must assess uniform properties uniformly meaning like properties and like communities should be like assessed and thereby like taxed. Uh, so uh, when the assessor goes to a given community and, and attributes values to, to given properties in that community, we rarely see them do measurements in cow bedrooms or knock on doors. What they're using is historical data. Uh, and sometimes they miss information that is very relevant to the value of your property. So if you believe their assessment is inaccurate, our appeal process allows you to file the appeal, which gives us jurisdiction to look at the value of your property within the context of the community and the assessments attributed to that community. And you can submit evidence to support your position that it's been over-assessed. So what type of evidence would that be? Uh, a lot of us have seen um, the banks approach us with the low interest rates requesting that we uh, refinance our properties. And a part of the refinance property refinancing process is to secure an appraisal of your property. Well, uh, we rarely suggest individuals go out and pay for an appraisal on a residential property because that can cost you thousands of dollars. Uh, so, but if you have an appraisal that you, you obtain because you sought refinancing, that's great evidence to tell us what an appraiser's opinion is of the value of your property. And we will look at those appraisals dating back usually up to three years 
to determine where the assessor felt the value, I'm sorry, where the appraiser felt the value of your property was. Uh, other examples of evidence. Um, if there is a bung, you live in a, you live in a bungalow in a neighborhood, and there's a bungalow next to you, and it's been on the market for two hundred thousand dollars for uh, a year, and it hasn't sold, and the assessor has your property at two hundred fifty thousand dollars for the same bungalow. Well, the fact that a property has sat in the market for a year at two hundred thousand, and it's just like yours next door to you, and it hasn't sold, is an indication. That that uh, the the, the two hundred fifty thousand dollar assessment the assessor put on your property uh, may be too high. So we will look at comparable properties in terms of sales, in terms of listing, in terms of assessed values placed on properties by the assessor that may uh, be relevant to your property. Any basically, we like to say anything you think is relevant to the value of your property, you should submit it, and if we can consider it and factor it in, we we will do so. Um, people, here's a question we have in the chat about paying your taxes. Should you should constituents wait to pay their taxes until they receive a decision from the Board of Review? You should always pay your current tax bill. Always. Even if you have an appeal filed or an appeal pending, or even if you get a result on appeal that for whatever reason is not reflected on your tax bill. You should pay the current tax bill, and then you are entitled to a refund in, of any amount that you've overpaid. Uh, you don't want to risk your property being purchased uh, or the, the taxes on your property being purchased uh, by, by entities that are out there buying taxes on properties uh, and then you potentially losing your property over a few thousand dollars in taxes. Uh, the COVID-19 factor, the COVID factor that the assessor used to compute rates. Um, that's a great question. We have not quite figured out what the assessor means by his COVID factor. Um, we all know that COVID-19 has had, has had an impact on the economy, but exactly what that translates into as it relates to property is a little unclear. Uh, unlike commercial properties, uh, like hotels, for instance, which had to close down due to COVID, therefore they don't have revenue and revenue is used to evaluate the value of properties, that type of analysis does not apply to homes. So uh, we're not quite sure what the assessor utilized uh, when he indicated he was applying a COVID factor. Uh, it's, it's a concern that we have. Um, if there is any legitimacy to it, we will obviously factor it in. We have absolutely no interest in preserving the assessor's valuation if there's evidence support to support a lower valuation. Here's a question. You mentioned through an appeal your property taxes will not be raised. However, is it possible for the property tax to be raised the following year if your property is assessed at a higher value on appeal? The short answer to that is no. Um, again, the assessor places a, a value on your property when you appeal with our agency, you're saying that assessed value is too high. We will, we will review evidence of value of the property, and where there's, a, where there's evidence to support it, we'll grant a reduction. If there's no evidence to support it, we will leave a no change, and that value will be used to calculate your tax bill. But let me also explain, talk a little bit about the cycle. Cook County taxes you one year in arrears. So, <clears throat> the tax bill that you're paying in 2021 is for the uh, the values that were attributed to your property in 2020. When you appeal in 2021, you're appealing the next tax bill. Uh, we all know that our tax, we receive two tax bills per year, one generally in March, April, and then one generally, depending on when the work gets done, in July, August. The first tax bill you you receive, you can calculate immediately based upon your prior year's taxes because your first tax bill is 55% of what you paid the prior year. So if you look at all of the property taxes you paid in 2019 and multiply that by 0.55, you know exactly what your first installment tax bill will be before you receive it. The second tax bill, <coughs> is generated after the assessor has assessed your property 
the Board of Review Appeals have been heard and decided, then your, your assessed value has been calculated, the taxes from the different taxing districts applied, then they generate the second installment bill. Uh, what they do is to determine the total tax bill, reduce what you paid in March, April, and then your second installment bill is the difference. So it's important to have your appeals filed and decided so that we can determine as low of an assessed value, an appropriate assessed value as possible, and so that that is used to calculate your second installment tax bill and hopefully lower it uh, below what you paid before. Um, that's, that's the process. Uh, we're in the midst of that process right now. Uh, historically, uh, we have gotten all of the tax bills out by July 1st. This year, that process is delayed uh, largely because the assessor did not timely complete his role and, and work and, and get it to the other taxing, uh, the other parties that play a role. So the whole schedule is behind. It also has something to do with COVID and the COVID impact on government and the ability of government to work in its offices. Here's another question. Is Zillow home value estimate a reasonable source of evidence? Um, Zillow can be right, Zillow can be wrong. Um, but Zillow is a great tool for an everyday homeowner to utilize to provide us an example of why they think their property has been overassessed. We will take a Zillow estimate and utilize that along with other comparable properties in your area and the assessed value of your property to determine whether or not the assessor seems to be accurate. So I encourage people to utilize Zillow as a tool to submit uh, as some evidence to support that the value of the property is inaccurate. Question, is it really worthwhile to appeal? I would say the answer is yes. We have seen uh, success rates ranging between 60 and 75, 80% depending on the year and the volume in terms of success, meaning six to eight out of, out of every 10 people that file an appeal with our agency have seen some type of a relief uh, in a given year. So I would say that's worth appealing. It doesn't cost you anything. We've consistently uh, uh, rebuffed any efforts to suggest that taxpayers should pay to file an appeal to correct an erroneous assessment. We think that should be a fee free process and we have successfully thwarted any efforts to require taxpayers to pay a fee to appeal. I don't know what the time, how much time do we have here? Well, it's, it, we don't want to, uh, it's 1255. You probably have another 10 minutes. Um, could you just kind of walk us through the, the process of how, yeah, how you come about, you know, doing the, um, um, your part of this, this whole transaction? Sure. So, so I've, I've been a lawyer now for almost 30 years. And in my practice, I represent individuals and advocate for them uh, in primarily personal injury and wrongful death cases. So I view my role as a, as a Cook County Board of Review Commissioner largely the same. Um, while I am an arbiter or decider of the appeals, uh, I am very much an advocate for everyday citizens having access, understanding the process, and um, and I think it's appropriate for us to assist them in identifying evidence that may support their appeals. Um, and that's what we do at our agency. So if you do nothing but file an appeal with our office electronically, which takes you about five minutes, uh, what we will do, that will be randomly assigned to an analyst. That analyst will utilize information available um, on the values of property in your area and the classifications of property in your area to identify where the assessor has assessed other properties. And um, the, the, the descriptions of the properties provide their square footage, different characteristics in terms of whether they're brick or, or, or stucco or wood frame, uh, information about whether they have basements or bedroom, numbers of bedrooms, all that types of information. And we find the properties are, that are most comparable to your property and that are closest to your property. And we identify uh, a variety of comparables 
to your property. And if those have lower assessed values, we can use those as comps to lower your assessed value. After that first analyst reviews the property, it then gets sent to a second and third analyst. They do a similar analysis uh, and review the analysis by what we call the first cut or first analyst and either agree or suggest a modification. And then you need two of those analysts to agree on a reduction to, for your reduction to go through. If there's no evidence to support the reduction, then we do what's called a no change. We do not increase the values of property. We are not assessors. We are <clears throat> quasi-judicial officers who hear evidence of value of properties. So, you know, our job isn't to assess the property. Our job is to uh, hear evidence of value of the property. So that's what we're doing when we review evidence you send in or we find evidence relevant to the value of the property. Once that process is completed, we certify the results and our numbers trump the assessor's number and our numbers are utilized to calculate your, your uh, second installment tax bill. Um, once, I like to say that your tax bill, I'm sorry, your assessed value is like your share of a pie. So if you take uh, the village of Maywood, for instance, it has a certain amount of money or levy that it costs to run the village for fire trucks and police cars and all of those things. Um, your house represents a sliver of that pie to fund those governmental services. Um, and, and by determining your assessed value, if we reduce the assessed value, your sliver gets smaller compared to the whole pie, thereby reducing the ultimate tax rate and levy that is applied to reduce your tax bill. Um, that's a that's quick and dirty explanation of how that process works. Okay, um, are there other questions for Commissioner Rogers? Seeing none, let me thank you for um, making yourself available. Like I said, I know how, how um, you know, how hard you work and I know you're probably the job that pays your bills <laughs> takes up quite a bit of your time, but I really appreciate you taking out this time to be with us today. And I'm gonna turn things over to the president. Now, President, um, Commissioner Rogers, we appreciate you. Thank you, thank you, thank, thank you. you. Thank you, thank you. Commissioner, we're grateful for you taking the time today. And this has been very good and interesting information. Appreciate it. Thank you for having me, and I'm happy to come back anytime if you think I can provide some valuable information. Thank you.